working on a large Stuart model steam plant part 14, fitting the large steam components to the baseboard. The baseboard is now finished and painted black. A friend of mine when he first saw the original baseboard before I painted it said, well it looks like oak and I think oak turns black when you get it wet. I'm no expert on types of wood but this doesn't look like oak to me and it doesn't feel like oak, it's very soft. But anyway, now it's painted black, it doesn't matter what it's made of. The job begins. First of all, I'm mounting the engine on the baseboard. And to do this, I have to pull the baseboard out from the bench and work underneath it. And at this stage, this is a dangerous thing to do because it could fall on the floor. But thankfully, I'm there, so it will fall on me instead. This is not a good time to get up and walk around the workshop. What I'm doing at the moment is trying to locate the holes in the original mahogany baseboard so I can screw it all back together. This proved to be more difficult than I thought, finding the hole in the mahogany part of the engine baseboard, but then I figured out that I could get the position by lining up the small holes in the baseboard with the small holes in the base of the condenser. I'm using quite long wood screws for this job because the engine needs to be firmly held to the baseboard. And the holes in the baseboard are slightly bigger than they need to be. I drilled them out because when I originally put this plant together, there was a slight discrepancy in the position of the mahogany base on the main baseboard. But now because I slightly enlarged the holes, I do have a small amount of adjustment. And here's a shot of the mahogany baseboard that supports the main engine, now screwed tightly in place to the main black baseboard. As you can see from this clip, it's perfectly aligned to the baseboard along the edge. Now it's time to mount the condenser onto the baseboard. When I first put this plant together, the only screws I could find that were suitable were posidrive screws, so I'm reusing these. You can't see them, they're well underneath the condenser. I'm having to use a pair of forceps to put the screw in position. And now, as you can hear in the background, I'm rummaging about in a box of 2BA bolts to find four countersunk 2BA slot headed screws, or bolts, or machine screws, or whatever you want to call them. At the beginning of this episode I mentioned that even though my friend said this looked like oak, it can't be, look how soft it is, look at the indentations where the boiler has been mounted in the past. In a similar manner to when I fitted the engine, I now have to work from underneath, so I pull the baseboard out and lean it over the edge of the bench. It's not too bad this time because the counterbalance of the engine being in position stops it falling towards me. This is a very simple job, I clamp on my back or spanner to the nut, and then use a screwdriver from underneath to tighten the bolt. This is just one side, I also did the other side exactly the same way. Here, using two substantial positive screws, I'm screwing the mounting block in place that will hold the hand pump. Thinking about it, when I first did this job, I shouldn't have done it like this. I should have drilled two holes in the steel block, threaded the holes, and then bolted it in position from underneath. And that way I could have removed the entire assembly in one unit, complete with the hand pump. If I'd have used the other method I've just mentioned, I could have removed the hand pump without having to do this. It's bad enough undoing these bolts, but it certainly took a lot longer to put them back in. But patience is a virtue, or so I'm told, and in no time at all, well in about 10 minutes or so, the bolts were all in position. I forgot to clean the hand pump, but I'm going to give the entire engine and plant a good clean once it's all on the baseboard. Less chance of dropping any parts on the floor if they're bolted down. When I first assembled this plant, I didn't bolt down the tank for the simple reason I wanted to make it removable for filling. It's not a good idea to fill a gas tank in situ on the bench. I always take them outside and fill them outside. The thing to remember, particularly if you have a gas tank in a boat, is that this gas is heavier than air, and if you fill the gas tank when it's in the boat, the leakage as you fill the gas tank fills the entire bottom part of the boat inside the hull and it's only when you light the boiler and the entire boat goes woof and blows off all the hatches that you realise that filling a gas tank inside a boat is not the smartest thing you'll ever do. Because I've modified the gas tank and I'm not actually going to use it full of liquid gas although I suppose I could do if I turned the main canister upside down the gas would flow from the canister into the gas tank but there's no real point in doing that. Anyway, back to the job. I've marked out the positions for the first two holes and I'm using my excellent Proxon motor tool to drill two one eighth of an inch diameter holes down into the baseboard. These rechargeable Proxon motor tools are really superb. 
The battery life is quite amazing. I've had a few cheaper motor tools that I bought on eBay and places like that, and they really have been poor. You get 10 minutes battery life. Whereas the battery life on this particular model is excellent. The last time I charged this was in my previous workshop, and that's about four months ago. So what have I got to? I've just drilled two holes, I'm brushing away the sawdust, I'm using a 4BA tap to thread the holes. And now I would just like to say that if there are any viewers watching this who are part of the Grand Order of Inspector Meticulous, this is a perfectly good way to mount components onto a wooden baseboard. I use the tap to thread the hole only halfway, and this makes it so that the bolt threads, after they've gone through the threaded part, cut their own thread in the wood, and you get a very tight fixing. I lightly bolted the tank in place at one side, this allowed me to mark out and then drill the other side, but I have a problem with the threading. The boiler's in the way and I can't rotate the tap. The solution is simple, buy a set of these. These are pin vices, very cheap from RDG Tools and ideal for the job. And it's no problem at all threading the holes in the wood with a pin vise. And once again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm only going down a little way into the wood maybe half the depth of the bolt. The bolt will do its stuff and tighten up in the hole as I screw it in place. I've built many radio controlled aircraft over the years and I've threaded wood very frequently. The only difference being with model aircraft is I would fill the hole with some super glue once it had been threaded. It has to be the very thin super glue and this soaks into the threads and makes them very hard. But for this application the wood is hard enough and here I'm screwing the brass bolts in position. Now the gas tank is firmly held to the baseboard in the same way as the boiler, condenser, hand pump and the engine itself. I think it's time to give the entire baseboard a blast with an airline, just to get rid of any sawdust and any bits of cat hairs that may be left. I haven't seen any cat hairs for a while, which I'm really pleased about. Because the steam engine is generally quite oily, the entire steam engine and its base were covered in cat hairs. And as I don't have a cat, I'm hoping that I don't get any other hairs on there. Maybe I'll get my own hairs, because I'm very hairy and I do mould a bit. But not as much as the previous owner's cat. This beautifully made water tank is held to the baseboard using countersunk bolts. And after fitting that, all that's left to go on the baseboard is the pump. That's currently in the house, I need to bring it into the workshop tomorrow. That's it for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.